What's up, emo geeks? We're back again with another guest episode. Hope you enjoy. So who are you and, uh, you know, what's going on? Hey, Matt. I'm Newt, and I have been doing email for about eight years. I've been doing um, marketing for about 10 years, almost, and gosh, it's wow. been that long. And I work for a publicly traded company, and I also do side work as a uh, an email consultant strategist. Well, you shared this REI email on the Email Geek Slack, and I jumped on the opportunity to talk to you about it because I thought it was pretty good. There were some good points here, and I'd love to get your thoughts. Before we get started, I want to thank Email Monks for sponsoring this episode. Need help in creating really good email templates for your campaigns? Discover how Email Monks can make that happen in a snap. They are experts at designing and coding email templates at a great price. If you want to level up your email game, give Email Monks a try. I'm a big fan of REI. Um, I believe that they've really improved their emails recently. I've probably been on their email list for maybe three years or so. And then at first, their emails were all image. And now I feel like they're doing a lot more HTML and image combination as email geeks mostly are really excited when emails have live text. And I noticed right away this one had live text. The top part of the email has a really good balance of color. Um, You have the live text standing out really strongly against the darker background. They have an image with that garage sale logo. But I feel like it works well with with the text as well. The one thing I was not crazy about were their use of ghost buttons. For me personally, as a consumer of email design and emails, as well as some tests that I've done for companies I work for, ghost buttons don't tend to perform as well as just filled in buttons. So if they had just filled that button in white and had the text be that gray to match that gray background, I think that would have been like 100% awesome. Yeah, I agree. It definitely the CTA sort of gets lost a little bit in yeah in this whole top section image. I think this balance of live text is very nice. Looking at this before, I almost I really like this REI members only piece, and I almost think that this could get highlighted in some way. Maybe maybe like a banner up here on top. Maybe bold this as well, just to to show that the members only sort of part of this would be kind of cool. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, potentially, maybe turn it into a tertiary call to action in case somebody got forwarded this email. Mm -hmm. This email itself, I'm a member, so this is, I'm guessing, because it says REI members only a lot. But if you look that you forward it to your mom or your brother or someone Mm -hmm. and they're not a member, maybe have it be like, oh, not a member? Here's how you can join. Kind of looking at their website before a little bit too, it seemed like maybe some of those CTAs look a little different than their website to me. That wouldn't surprise me. I feel like very few companies have their email and their website really match. Yeah, like I kind of do, like as you said too, like that lighter gray, and even some of these subtle hover effects that would be interesting if they tried to do that in the email. But I almost really like this, the lower case, it seems like how, like Mm -hmm. the sentence case, how they do it a lot in some of their other parts of their site. So I almost would like to see this in the email. I wonder if that's something that they might have tested and found out that all caps is what works best for these. Potentially. I've done a few of those tests and have personally not found any difference between um, lowercase sentence case or all caps. Maybe their um, their audience really likes all caps. <laughs> I guess so. This sub section up here seems like these are a little blurry, especially if you're going to have this top navigation not be live text. It's sort of contrasting yeah. with this live text to me always like stands out that, you know, this is definitely clearly an image. So do you like this top navigation up here? Do you think it's uh, beneficial to this email or do you like the mobile view more? I don't. I'm not a huge fan. And this is just a personal opinion. I haven't actually done tests myself on this. I know I've worked for some companies that have done tests on top nav. Um, it's been a really long time since I've worked in B2C, but I personally am not a fan of navigation in emails. I think it's distracting, like you said, a lot of times this image instead of text-based. So for example, if I get an email on my Outlook for my business account, I'm not even seeing those, those links anyway, and they take up a lot of space. On mobile, as you can see, they don't show up, which is great because it's even worse when you have that navigation on mobile. It's all messed up, potentially doesn't stack right. 
So I'm glad that at least did it where when the screen scales into a smaller viewport, it gets rid of the navigation. And then they do actually do have a sort of a mobile nav. So I do like this view more like this one color. Yeah. It doesn't distract you. Some of these, these are, I'm not as familiar with REI, but like some of these call to actions don't seem like that clear. Like, I guess if you're interested in classes or something like journal, I don't know. I guess it's like maybe their blog, but. Uh, yeah, exactly. there's a lot of navigation over here on mobile. I almost wish this was on desktop and maybe stacked a little differently so that you still maybe have some of these bottom links if you're interested once you hit that bottom section of the email with, you know, the social icons and some additional text. But I would rather almost have this be stacked, you know, on this side on desktop, maybe showing those at the bottom instead of taking up that additional, I guess, real estate up top. I agree. I don't think, I mean, obviously this is take it with a grain of salt. You want to test it for your audience, but I really highly doubt that your top nav is going to perform better than your main offer. Something that I recommend um, when I do strategy and consulting is to utilize hierarchy when you're doing images or text. So here clearly they have some hierarchy going on. I'm not really sure it's the right thing that they have highlighted. Saturday is huge. Um, I do appreciate that the date is clear. Sometimes I receive emails where there's an event or an invite of some sort, and I'm unsure of what date this is supposed to be on. I personally would have liked, well, I like, and I applaud the use of hierarchy here. Definitely gets my attention. I would have liked the garage sale to be the focal point because, I, you know, I'm interested in an, an REI members only. So it's super cool for me uh, event um, that's a sale. So it's like a really good sale. I would have appreciated that being the focal point and then maybe, you know, subheading that had the date. Now it's still clear, you know, I wouldn't have to go and find it, but at the same time, it was highlighting a little bit more the event and less the, just the date Saturday, you know? Yeah. I almost think this mobile uh, view looks a little bit better with that hierarchy where this is the main focal point and there's like supportive upside down pyramid sort of style that still mm-hmm. wants you to go down the email. And I feel like that find your nearest store CTA does seem like the right place to, you know, click on. And that is a pretty actionable CTA, I would say. It is pretty clear what this sale is. It sounds like, and it, you know, going to your near store, even though maybe it doesn't give you that much more information about the sale, mm-hmm. I think it is the right move when it comes to you know, getting people into the store and deciding on that. And what would have been really cool <laughs> is if they could have dynamically pulled my store, my favorite yeah. store. They probably know that I shop there. Mm-hmm. It's very close to my house. They have that data and it would just say, here's your location and maybe have a button that says add it to your calendar so that sure. you would not forget on Saturday, you'd wake up in the morning and just head right to your REI store. <laughs> Yeah, that's um, add to calendar is one of those things that I think I've seen, you know, some more brands try and do. I think it definitely makes sense if you are invested in REI as a member and being loyal to that brand, like that is something that you wouldn't want to miss out on. Mm -hmm. I do like this secondary message. It does sound like if you can make it into the store, you can shop used gear. Um, One note I had, I guess, on this section is I think this is still looking a little blurry to me, um, but not showing like really any products in this email at all, I guess. Maybe like their selection is always changing, but to me, this is kind of, you know, I don't really know what kind of use gear I would even like maybe start to think about shopping for. So maybe pulling in, I'm not sure if they can do it like dynamically or anything like that, but just some mm-hmm. items that it might be in stock now, I think would maybe make me more uh, convinced to, to shop some of this gear. Otherwise, you know, I don't really know what they're selling. So. I do appreciate the message. The assumption that everyone is always going to make it to a thing that you invite them is, is ridiculous. But I do agree that this image doesn't really make a lot of sense. I had a hard time ingesting what was going on. Like, what's she doing? Is she about to get into going camping? I, I couldn't really tell what was going on. It also is a huge image takes up a lot of vertical space and I just wasn't convinced that that was necessary. For that part, I, I, I do agree with what you said. Um, and another note on my phone, I have a Pixel 2 XL um, and I use the Gmail app to access my emails. It actually is not showing full width. It's showing maybe like 80% of the width, maybe 85% of the whole, the whole email itself, the container. And I've noticed a lot of their emails do that and it is a little bit bothersome because it smushes everything even smaller. And I have a big screen, so like, you know, you could have taken up the entire uh, viewport to show me your message. And I think maybe there's something up with their code. I haven't had a chance to look to see yeah, if I could, it could be figure it out. Testing issues or something. This is email yeah. on desktop. It's a pretty wide email. I think this is like 740 pixels, I think I saw. So this is a little wider on desktop. It definitely seems like 
they might be focusing on that mobile audience a little bit more. It seems a lot more usable to me, at least a little bit. I like how this flows a lot more, I think. So. Yeah. yeah, I love their footer, actually. <laughs> I, I see a lot of footers that are really sloppy and not well mm-hmm. thought out, but it looks like they really put some thought into it and not putting those social icons up at the top. I know a lot of companies like to have that at the top, but let's be honest here, very few people click on it. So just go ahead and put it in the photo <laughs> if you must have it there. I've done a ton of testing and really I probably sent out 10 million emails with the social links. And generally speaking, probably more for a B2B audience, they just do not get clicked on nearly as much. Now, mm-hmm. if you, for a B2C audience, I could see a little bit more engagement there, but probably not as much as we would all like. I think that is an improvement from maybe some of their, their previous emails as well, where they had a lot of links in the footer. Uh, and this maybe yeah. is more cleaned up. I think there might be some things they might be leaving out because you are a member. Uh, I could see them maybe having additional links to like convert someone to a member in this section, maybe possibly. Uh, and I think even though it's a little small, having this, you know, you can chat, email, or call us is, mm-hmm. you know, useful enough. Maybe that could be part of, you know, this more bold section up here. But yeah, pretty clean. I think they let the, the message sort of speak for itself. So that's nice. Uh, yeah, this is a great example. Mm-hmm. I really, yeah, like the live text use, especially, um, you know, the live text over this background image. Mm-hmm. I think they've done a good amount of testing, but I would almost like this mobile version to take some notes and maybe translate them to desktop. Maybe they have a very large mobile audience. So, you know, maybe this is the way that they'd like to go. So. I wouldn't be surprised if they had a, also a very large mobile audience. What I'm used to dealing with is much more skewed toward desktop with the B2B audience, but this is probably at least half, if not more. Is there anything else you saw from their previous emails that they might have changed at all? Or I've seen them use really good lifestyle imagery, like really attractive, um, lots of bright colors, but nothing that got in the way of the messaging. And I did appreciate that because I think sometimes we get really excited about our emails and we use images that either just don't work like this image over here that get in the way of the messaging. So for example, if you put live text over um, the sleeping bags, but potentially it got obfuscated, it was hard to see. I've seen them send out some really beautiful emails um, that were a little bit more uh, lifestyle imagery based. I would consider this a little bit more like more to the message. I'm, I'm a big fan of, of REI's emails. I just really the one note from me about my mobile is just it's not rendering at, at full width on the Gmail app on Android. Uh, so I would recommend somebody take a look at that. Um, but they really do make really good emails and I appreciate them not doing all image emails. Well, great. Thank yeah. you for taking the time. That's That's about it. <laughs> Awesome. Well, it was nice talking to you. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Thank you. If you have any feedback on the series, please leave a comment down below. Hit subscribe to keep up with future episodes. Thank you for giving a listen and letting our sponsors know you love really good emails.